Welcome to Simmons College of Kentucky, the nation's 107th historical black college and university, where history meets excellence and lives are forever changed. Today we celebrate the rich tapestry of our institution as we reflect on the transformative events that have shaped our college and changed lives for the better for the past year. It all begins in June as the sun shines down on our campus, embracing the spirit of unity and well-being. The Health Equity Fair brings our community together, promoting the importance of a healthy mind and body. In July, our 144-year-old campus comes alive with the vibrant energy of Simmons Fest, a gathering of college and community to celebrate our culture and the beautiful diversity that defines us. August brings a sense of excitement and growth as the 2022-23 school year began. With enrollment doubling from the previous year, we embraced an expanding family of bright minds and passionate hearts. During September, we witnessed the spirit of giving through the Give for Good Louisville campaign. We joined our efforts with others throughout Louisville Metro and beyond, raising funds to support our mission of transforming lives through education. A moment of historic significance happened in September as we welcomed friends and dignitaries from across the nation. The ribbon cutting and building dedication for the Ida B. Wells Hall marks a milestone in our journey. October marked the tip-off of a thrilling basketball season where our men's and women's teams showcased their talent, resilience, and the unbreakable spirit of Simmons Falcons. November arrives, bringing the cherished tradition of homecoming. The campus buzzes with excitement as we witness extraordinary displays of talent. December enveloped within us a sympathy of joy and harmony. The blessed talent of our jazz ensemble, accompanied by the beautiful voices of Simmons, created an enchanting winter concert. January marked a turning point in our journey. The announcement of our partnership with the University of Kentucky symbolized years of effort and a renewed commitment to building stronger community relationships. February's air is filled with inspiration and determination. At the Transform Louisville Breakfast, city officials, corporate donors, and national partners unite to affirm our school's role as a vehicle for empowerment. Amidst the beauty of March, we celebrated our heritage and excellence in education. The Kentucky Association of Blacks in Higher Education Breakfast became a moment of pride as we stood together, embracing our legacy and inspiring future generations. History was made in April. The establishment of the Reverend Jesse L. Jackson Sr. Center for Racial Justice solidified our commitment to fighting for equality, ensuring that Simmons College of Kentucky would forever be a beacon of hope and progress. The month of April also marked a significant milestone in our journey as we celebrated the first ever film production of the newly established Film Institute of Simmons. And in the month of May, we welcomed our academic honor ceremony where we recognize the extraordinary academic performance as we celebrate those who begin their journey today as graduates of Louisville's HBCU. We do so with hearts full of pride hope and boundless possibility. May your dreams take flight. May you forever carry the spirit of Simmons within you as you shape a brighter future for yourself and for generations to come. Congratulations. Simmons College of Kentucky, where education and opportunity converge. One, two, three, With a wide range of degree programs designed to empower and inspire, Simmons College offers an enriching academic journey tailored to your passions and career aspirations. 10 captivating degree programs that will equip you with the knowledge and skills to excel in today's dynamic world. Let's start with the Bachelor of Arts in Applied Mathematics. 
In this program, you'll delve into the fascinating world of numbers, equations, and problem solving. From statistics to calculus, you'll develop a strong foundation in mathematical theory and its practical applications across various industries, preparing you for careers in finance, technology, research, and more. Next up, we have the Bachelor of Arts in Applied Psychology. This program explores the human mind and behavior, equipping you with the knowledge to understand and positively impact individuals and communities. Through coursework and hands-on experiences, you'll gain valuable insights into counseling, social work, human resources, and other fields where a deep understanding of human behavior is essential. If you have a passion for innovation and a drive to shape the business business landscape, consider the Bachelor of Arts in Business Entrepreneurship. From creating business plans to developing marketing strategies, by studying real-world examples and working on entrepreneurial projects, you will be ready to launch your own ventures or contribute to existing ones. In today's digital age, the Bachelor of Science in Computer Information Systems is a program at the forefront of technological advancements. From programming languages to database management, you'll gain the skills needed to thrive in the ever-evolving field of technology. Whether you aspire to be a software developer, a systems analyst, or IT manager, this program will pave the way for your success. Our Bachelor of Arts in Cross-Cultural Communications program prepares you to navigate the diverse and interconnected world we live in. You'll explore the complexities of language, culture, and communication, acquiring the tools to bridge cultural gaps and foster understanding. This degree opens doors to careers in international relations, diplomacy, journalism, and global organizations. And for those with a love for the arts, the Bachelor of Arts in Music Performance is an opportunity to hone your talent and pursue your passion. With a focus on instrumental or vocal performance, you'll receive the comprehensive training from experienced faculty and gain valuable performance experience through recitals and concerts. This program sets the stage for a rewarding career in music or further studies. At Simmons College of Kentucky, we also offer a Bachelor's of Arts in Religious Studies. This program provides a comprehensive exploration of various religious traditions, their history, and their impact on societies. With an emphasis on critical thinking and analysis, you'll develop a nuanced understanding of religious beliefs and practices, preparing you for careers in ministry, academia, counseling, and more. The Bachelor of Arts in Sociology invites you to examine the social structures and systems that shape our world. Through sociological research methods and theories, you'll gain insights into societal issues, inequality, and social change. This program equips you to pursue careers in social work, political analysis, community development, and advocacy. The Associate of Arts and General Studies provides a flexible and well-rounded foundation for students seeking a broad-based education. This program allows you to explore a range of subjects, including humanities, natural sciences, social sciences, and more. Whether you're undecided about your major or wish to build a diverse skill set, the Associate of Arts and General Studies offers a customizable path to academic success. And lastly, Associate of Arts in Religious Studies. This program offers a comprehensive introduction to religious traditions, beliefs, practices, allowing you to deepen your understanding of spirituality and theology. Whether you plan to pursue further studies or seek a career in religious leadership or counseling, this program provides a solid foundation. At Simmons College of Kentucky, these 10 exceptional degree programs provide a multitude of opportunities for personal and professional growth. Whether you're passionate about mathematics, psychology, business, technology, or the arts, Simmons College is dedicated to helping you reach your goals. So if you're ready to embark on an enriching educational journey and join a vibrant community of learners, Simmons College of Kentucky is here to guide you every step of the way. Visit our website or contact our admissions office to learn more about these degree programs and to start shaping your future today.
Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome the 13th president of Simmons College of Kentucky, Dr. Kevin W. Cosby. welcome you to this, the 144th commencement exercises for historic black college, Simmons College of Kentucky. We are here to celebrate our graduates who will be graduating today. We're here to celebrate the family and friends, those of you who have come from our community to encourage and to congratulate our graduates. At this time, would you receive Dr. Kevin Cosby as he will come with words of welcome. Thank you so very much, Dr. Smith, and to our graduates, congratulations. Veritas, veritas, which means truth. And you have embraced truth during your journey at Simmons College of Kentucky. A commencement, the word literally means beginning. So this is not the conclusion of your academic journey. This is just the commit commencement, a beginning of a wonderful adventure. We congratulate you and we welcome all of you. Since you are here at this commencement exercise, guess what you, you now are? You're a part of Simmons Nation. And we welcome you to this place. We see, t we see far today. And the reason we see far with great vision is because we're standing on the shoulders of our predecessors. And anytime you're standing on someone else's shoulders, you can see far. Our hope is, is just as we are standing on someone's shoulders, that God might make our shoulders strong enough that another generation will come and stand on our shoulders. Again, we say to you, welcome, be blessed, be inspired, and be celebratory over the achievements of these emerging scholars as they graduate from Louisville's Historical Black College and University, Simmons College. Peace and blessings to you. At this time, we will have our reading of divine scripture by the Reverend Dr. James Etta Ferguson, the senior pastor of St. Peter's United Church of Christ here in Louisville, followed by invocation by the Reverend Dr. Joshua A. Harris, Sr., the senior pastor of the First Gethsemane Baptist Church here in Louisville. Following the invocation, we will have a musical selection by Mr. Joe Level, and the One Purpose Community Choir. Our scripture for this afternoon comes from the book of Joshua. Joshua 9, 1, verses 7 through 9, and I am reading the Amplified Version. Only be strong and very courageous. Be careful to do everything in accordance with the entire law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may prosper and be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do on it uh, everything in accordance with all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified or dismayed, intimidated, 
For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal and immutable God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast, and our eternal home. God, we say thank you. We thank you, O oh God, that last night was not our last night but that once more and again you have allowed your grace to grab us and your mercy to meet us at the point of our very need. How sweet it is to be loved by you. God, we honor you on today as we celebrate the history and the heritage of this illustrious institution, Simmons College. We ask, oh God, your continued blessings upon its leadership as well as its fellowship as they give every effort to educate, to elevate, and to empower those whom have been trusted to their care. God, we say thank you today. We thank you, O oh God, for the honorees. We thank you for the graduates. We thank you, O oh God, for their support system. And we thank you, O oh God, that they know that if it had not been for you, who was on their side, they would not have made it to the finish line. God, we say thank you for preserving them. We thank you for providing for them. And God, we say in the name of Jesus that some may come magna cum laude, some may come summa cum laude, but all of us have entered into your gates with holy hands saying, thank you, Lordy. Now, Lord, we don't ask for your presence because we know from experience that you're already here. So we simply ask that spirit of the living God, Fall fresh upon us right now. Send your glory and throw your weight around like never before. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. And we expect it in the name of our resurrected, reigning, and soon to return Redeemer, Jesus the Christ. In Jesus' name we do pray and ask it all. Amen.
Let's give God more praise. He is indeed fount of every blessing. Thank you so very much, One Purpose Choir and Dr. Ferguson and Dr. Harris. At this time, we humbly acknowledge our beginnings when we talk about the General Association of Baptists in Kentucky who by faith in 1865 envisioned the beginning of an institution of higher education. By faith began that institution with its charter in 1873 with the doors opening in 1879. And we're glad that that General Association of Baptists in Kentucky is yet standing strong in this commonwealth with 14 districts, particularly the central district here in the Louisville and vicinity area. We're favored today with two moderators, our state moderator and the central district moderator to bring greetings. We hear first from the Reverend Dr. Michael Rice, the moderator of the General Association of Baptists in Kentucky, and then Dr. D. Corey Scholl, moderator of the Central District Baptist Association. Would you welcome them at this time? Certainly this, this evening we praise God for this moment in time. Uh, to our esteemed president, uh, Dr. Kevin Cosby, uh, whose brilliance is celebrated across the length and breadth of this country. Uh, thank you for your leadership, and certainly we thank God tonight for your friendship. Uh, to the members of this official board, distinguished faculty and staff, thank you tonight for this tremendous opportunity that you've blessed this moderator with. I want to say to the class of 2023, uh, congratulations to you all. Thank God tonight for Simmons Nation. Amen. Certainly, I contend that this has been a long and tedious journey for you, uh, but you've made it, and for that we are grateful to God. I want you to know that the General Association of Baptists in Kentucky uh, celebrate you today. Uh, your accomplishments prove that the vision of our founding fathers of this great institution was birthed in the divine. So God bless you and may God continue to keep you. I want to remind you that you are positioned now uh, to make a difference. Uh, go be great. Be good people. Be sound. Be sensible. Be solid. And God will take care of you. God bless you and congratulations to you. I stand before you tonight um, a bit disappointed and filled with regret. On yesterday, I did something that I don't normally do. I was in a conversation with a friend and uh, told him that I could not wait to watch the Golden State Warriors play the LA Lakers. And I told him my excitement was rooted in the fact that I knew that uh, Steph Curry and the guys were going to take it home. <laughs> He said, well, you're going to be gravely disappointed. I said, no, 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 no. I'm a man of God. I'm a man of faith. And I just feel something deep within me saying that they're going to win the game. And indeed, last night, I stayed up far past my bedtime, leaning in the hope, then kneeling in prayer that Steph Curry and the Golden State Warriors would win the game. I guess I was so invested in it because I did something that I don't normally do. When my friend began to tell me how silly I was to think that they were actually going to win the game, he said, put some money on it. 
<clears throat> and admittedly, I knew I had children. <laughs> and I, I know that I have bills that are due. But uh, I took him up on the offer, and I put some money on it. I owe him money now. <laughs> because I bet on the wrong team because of my loyalty to the wrong player. He called me at 1 a.m. this morning and he said, don't ever forget that though Steph Curry may be impressive, that LeBron James is a far superior rebounder, defender, and passer. When it comes to leadership and the shaping of institution, there is no greater rebounder, passer, or defender than the Reverend Kevin Wayne Cosby. Would you help me celebrate Dr. Cosby, President Cosby, for his laudable leadership today? We salute you. He's better than LeBron. So I rise on the behalf of the Central District Baptist Association to congratulate this class, this, these graduating uh, students. You have done it. We're proud of you. We celebrate you. Um, don't make my mistake and bet on the wrong team. Do what I should have done last night. Always bet on yourself. Congratulations. We thank these fine men. Let's give them another hand. We are privileged to have both of these gentlemen as members of our board of trustees, and they serve diligently to help continue in the advancement of this college. And that makes me celebrate all of our trustees who are present here today. Would all of our board of trustees members present please stand at this time that we might acknowledge you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Our work at Simmons has advanced with great leadership as we support the vision of our president. And I'm happy to have with us today our executive uh, leadership committee. And we would ask all of the executive vice presidents of Simmons, if you would please stand at this time that we might acknowledge your leadership. All of the executive staff, chief of staff also, we're so glad. Thank you. The work that Simmons does is encouraged by faculty, and faculty make a college work. Faculty is the reason why we are in existence, for they carry out the programs that have been drafted and curriculum presented. Would all of our faculty members of Simmons please stand at this time to be acknowledged. And the staff of Simmons keeps everything running, supporting these great leaders. And we could not do what we do without our staff. So would the staff please stand, all of the staff members of Simmons. Thank you. Thank you. I did all of that because our next presenter is a great reflection of the work that has been done day after day in the classrooms of Simmons College of Kentucky. We are favored today to have, if you please, our valedictorian of this class, Mrs. Patricia Reeves who comes to us graduating today with a perfect 4.0. And she will be graduating today with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Sociology. And so would you welcome at this time our student speaker, Mrs. Patricia Reeves.
Before I begin my story, I need to say, thank so many people. First and foremost, I need to thank my wonderful husband, Jeff. If it were not for his undying support, I would not be standing here today. Next, I must say how much of an honor it is to see so many friends and family and members of, and dignitaries here today. Your overwhelming support of Simmons College makes all of us graduates happy. Dr. Cosby, thank you for your dedication as the president of Simmons College and for making it what it is today. Also, thank you for your vision of what it can be in the future. I need to thank Dr. Smith for, the long and dedication, for his long dedication to this institution and to all the administration for their hard work in keeping everything running smoothly. I need to thank all of the faculty who have dedicated so many long hours to creating a curricula and for challenging all of us students to do our best. I need to express a special thank you to Dr. Nancy C. She was the first person to interview me when I decided to apply to Simmons. And as the chair of the James R. L. Diggs Department of Sociology, she has taught me well. Lastly, I need to thank my fellow students and the graduates here today who have become my friends and who have shared your sacred space with me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 1954. In May of 1954, the U.S. Supreme Court issued a landmark decision ruling that segregation in public schools was unconstitutional because Oliver Brown's daughter was denied entrance into an all-white elementary school in Topeka, Kansas, he filed a class action lawsuit that traveled all the way to the Supreme Court and became known as Brown versus Board of Education. Problem solved. Black and white children would now be educated together and equitably. Well, we know that didn't happen. 1954, a small community outside of Detroit, Michigan, a young family, a mom, a dad, and two children looked for a new place to live. They chose what's known as a sundown town. With a breath of relief, this mom and dad began to settle into their all-white neighborhood that they specifically chose to live in. They were happy to be away from people of color. This was 1954, this was my family, and this was the year I was born. In his book, Sundown Town, sociologist James Lowen uncovered this shameful facet of 20th century race relations. Nearly every state north of the Mason-Dixon line incorporated these types of cities where only white people were allowed to buy property or to rent homes. No black American could stay within its boundaries once the sun went down. The local police departments guaranteed this fact. This was redlining on steroids and this was my world for several years. So, why am I here today as a graduate from Louisville's only HBCU? In my adulthood, I began to question race relations in this country. I found fault with what I had learned as a young girl. And in 2019, I participated in three racial justice programs where I worked. These offerings challenged me to take the next step and learn more about the black community in Louisville. I enrolled in my first class 
here at Simmons College of Kentucky in January of 2020. Well, we all know what happened that year. During that first semester, we were forced into our homes due to the pandemic. Then, at the end of 2020, I was diagnosed with breast cancer and found out that I needed a double mastectomy. I had the surgery and recovered at home, still working full time and on, taking online classes with my Simmons friends. Some of you became my support group that I could lean on. <clears throat> so why am I sharing all this with you? Because it is during this time that I realized I had so much to learn from you. The faculty, administration, and in students at Simmons College of Kentucky have taught me more than I can explain here. It's not about reading a textbook or analyzing a research paper or completing necessary assignments. All of that is important. But there is something else that you taught me. You were gentle with my ignorance. In our class discussions, you calmly took me by the hand and shared your story so that, so that I could understand how my misconceptions had always formed my opinions. Opinions that were bolstered with privilege and mistaken beliefs. You mothered me into becoming someone who understands yet cannot fully know your experience. You welcomed me and you patiently nurtured me. A sacred place is defined as a place where God lives, breathes, and acts. A sacred place is where a person feels safe and calm. Simmons College of Kentucky is a sacred place. I came here not knowing how I would be accepted. You looked upon me in a way that makes me feel safe. During these last three years, you have enabled me to grow. Your sacred space became mine as well. As I look back at the sundown town I was raised within, I realize how much I missed over all those years. You have taught me well. I hope that I can honor what you have instilled within me to make positive changes in our society in the future. I am abundantly thankful that I made this journey with you. I truly wish that more people who look like me could venture down this same path that I have had the privilege to navigate. What a better world it might be if we could all be agents of change together. Thank you. Oh, come on, let's congratulate Mrs. Patricia Reeves. Thank you, thank you so much for that testimony and the inspiration that it gives. At this time, we will call upon trustee of Simmons. We want to mention that Reverend Dr. Samuel Tol Tolbert Jr., our board chair, is unable to be with us, but he sends his regards and he's designated the Reverend Dr. F. Bruce Williams, the pastor of Bates Memorial Baptist Church, to share in this time of gifts for Simmons. After he concludes, I will come back with uh, instructions on our giving. Dr. Williams. Let every heart say amen. <clears throat> To uh, Pastor Cosby, who is indeed the GOAT, he is the greatest of all times when it comes to 
uh, presidents and to the speaker today, to these graduates, to the board, to the faculty and to uh, the support staff, administrative staff, to all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ and creation. I was sitting there and just realized that the valedictorian is my next door neighbor. Is that Miss? Are you? She's my next door neighbor. She lives next door to me. And um, those are good people. She's got a wonderful family. And uh, I know that we're not allowed to put signs up in the neighborhood I live. Uh, but during the protests, her family had a Black Lives Matter <laughs> sign in their window, and I knew I was next to the right people. <laughs> uh, let me also say, give my condolences to uh, my good friend, Reverend uh, Dr. Corey Scholl, for the death of his hopes and dreams <laughs> and the loss <laughs> of Steph Curry. <laughs> And the, and the warriors. Uh, I admire the fact that he's a man of faith and prayer. And um, uh, he has to remember that there are three answers to prayer. One is yes, one is wait. And the apostle Paul found out that one answer to prayer is no. And, uh, but let me leave you with this, the same thing God left with Paul, his grace is sufficient <laughs> for you. <laughs> um, one thing I do admire, though, is he said that he was so confident that his team would win that he was willing to put some money on it. And um, they have asked me to come and somehow invite, if not convince you, to give to Simmons College of Kentucky. And it seems to me that if you really believe that this is, the, <clears throat> is a divine move, if you really believe in the future of this institution, if you really believe in its significance in this city, state, country, and world, then it's one thing to say it, but if you believe in its success, then you ought to put some money on it. I'm not going to tell you how much to put on it, but I do want to insist that whatever you put down on it will be a good investment. And I say an investment because if you give something, you don't expect anything in return. But when you invest in something, you always expect a return on your investment. And time doesn't permit me to tell you what a great return you will have on your investment, but I do want to suggest to you the part and parcel of the return you'll get on your investment is sitting in this building right now. You never know. Amen. <clears throat> we do not simply give to have facilities, although facilities are needed to facilitate what we're seeking to do. But we are giving because we are seeking to turn out the kind, quality, and caliber of people that our country needs. And you never know what you have in any graduating class or any student that comes from Simmons. You might have a Nat Turner or a Denmark Vesey or Tucson Overture or you might have a Sojourner Truth or Harriet Tubman. You might have a Malcolm or Medigo or a Martin. You never know what you'll have. And you never know what impact they're going to have on the world in which we live. And it would be good to know, wouldn't it, that one of the reasons why they were able to have the impact they did is because you made the investment that you made. What's important about your investment is not whether people know whether you gave it or not. What's important in your investment is that you're giving it to an institution that I am convinced God has placed, salvaged, saved toward success so that this world could be made a better place. So whatever it is that God puts on your heart to give, let me encourage you to prepare to give now. I'm not sure whether they have on the screens or an opportunity to give electronically. Uh, and even if you're not prepared to give this moment, here it's on the screen. You can scan the code and give. But I want to encourage you to give the very best gift you can give. 
I said that I don't want to give you an amount, and I don't want to give you an amount, but I do know that there are people in this room that can give a great deal of money to Simmons College for Kentucky, and I want to encourage you to do just that. I don't know, are they going to take up an offering or are they going to, oh, right. In your programs, you should have received an offering envelope, and you're welcome to use that and to complete it legibly so that we might thank you for your gift to Simmons and include your money inside the envelope in check or cash, or there is a provision for you to, to give us your credit card information and we will secure that. We also have on page 27 of your program, if you're unable to connect to the screen, the QR code for giving. And it's also on the back of that envelope. And so if you would like to give via the QR code on the screen or on the envelope or in tweet page 27 of your program, you're welcome to do that. Our ushers will pass the buckets and we ask while we have music, if you would share as they pass into the offering plate your offerings. Thank you. and begin to take up the offering and prepare your offerings. We're going to ask the trustees if you would now come and stand in front uh, as the ushers pass and as music is played. Uh, trustees? I saw more than me stand up. Okay, all right. They stand right across the front. And... Um, <clears throat> Again, if you're having difficulty, the QR code that was on the screen may not work uh, for you. There is on the back of your offering envelope, as well as on page 27, the QR code for giving.
pray. Thank you for the gifts and the givers. Take these gifts now and do with these gifts what Jesus did with the two fish and five loaves. Take them, bless them, break them, pass them, and use them to glorify your own name and to bless your world. In Jesus' name we ask it, and for his sake I do pray. Amen. We thank you so much for your giving, and if you wish, you can always use the QR code that is in your program in days and weeks to come. So we ask that you continue to think of Simmons and support our college. At this time, Dr. Cosby will return and introduce our speaker. Thank you so much, Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith is just phenomenal. He does so many things uh, for our school and city. Thank you so much, sir. The word prophet is a homonym. It can be spelled P-R-O-F-I-T, or it can be spelled P-R-O-P-H-E-T. Sometimes we get the word confused. Sometimes when activists and clergy stand up and are introduced as a prophet, you should perhaps spell it P-R-O-F-I-T. They are so busy looking for the lost coin, they cannot find the lost sheep. When I say prophet in reference to our speaker, I am not talking about P-R-O-F-I-T. I'm talking about P-R-O P-H-E-T. A, a prophet, according to the great Old Testament scholar Hirsch, um, Abraham Heschel, who was a colleague of Martin Luther King Jr., is simply one who speaks truth to power. In our society and throughout human history, it has always been a tendency for the strong to take advantage of the weak. But God has always raised up prophets who defended the weak against the strong, who defended women against patriarchy, who, dis who defended the poor against oligarchy, defended blacks against racism. In our city, in our state and in our nation, no person does that more consistently with more intelligence and with more integrity than Dr. Ricky Jones. We have a voice in our community for voiceless people, for marginalized people. When you hear Dr. Jones speak and when you hear Dr. Jones right. So many people ascend from the community, the black community, in the, to the upper echelons of academia and they contract amnesia. They come to church and they say Amon and not Amen. That is not Ricky Jones. Ricky Jones is a product of the black community and he is a defender of the black community. For years he has served um, as the chairman of the Pan-African Studies Department at the University of Louisville and now he is transitioning to the Enviro Center um, which is a justice arm at the University of Louisville. I love as I would love my own brother, Dr. Ricky Jones. And it's with great pride, and I will define this as one of the signature moments in the history of Simmons College, to have Dr. Ricky Jones as the commencement speaker for this graduating class. Immediately following this wonderful selection 
bond with one purpose. I want to receive our commencement speaker, Dr. Ricky Jones.
souls and the soul of black folk. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was talking to my dear brother Jason Claiborne before we came in and told him that a lot of Sundays I come to church and get so full with the music. I don't know if I should say this with you here. I told him <laughs> after I hear him sing, sometimes I could just go home. <laughs> but I have to stay. Please give it up for that beautiful choir. And what they're bringing to us today is, as is, is Reverend said, I'm a professor at the University of Louisville, but I did not go to their graduation today. Neither do I go to their graduation any year, usually. When I finished my doctorate at the University of Kentucky some years ago, I didn't go to my own graduation. Last graduation I went to that I participated in was from my dear Morehouse College, but I am so full and honored to be here with you today. I have been looking forward to this ever since Dr. Cosby invited me. You're not here for me, though, and I will not be long. I'll be very brief because what we're really here is for these wonderful graduates. And you're doing such an incredible thing. Not only are you graduating, but you're graduating from an HBCU. Yeah. What is an HBCU? A historically black college or university. What is it? It's so many things that I know firsthand. I certainly bring you greetings from all of my brothers across the country and across the world from Morehouse College. I'm a very proud Morehouse man. But I began my college career at the U.S. Naval Academy, where a lot of people in the majority population would say, this is such an elite school. What an honor for you to go to Annapolis. And once I was miseducated and twisted and psychologically and emotionally abused there for a little while, I went to Morehouse College. And I'll never forget was talking to the dean of admissions, a brother by the name of Sterling Hudson, good Morehouse man. And I didn't even know if they were going to let me in school. And I won't give you all the sordid details of the things I did at the Naval Academy. But I remember Dr. Hudson said to me, so you're the young man that caused all that trouble at the Naval Academy. I said, yes, sir, I am. And I said to God, this man ain't going to let me in school. He stood up and he said, son, let me shake your hand. Because no self-respecting black man could build a place like that and not cause trouble. <laughs> but then he said something key. Now, I'm an Atlanta kid. But he said to me, Welcome to Morehouse College. Welcome home. What is an HBCU? It's home. It's an idea, but it's also a reality. It's a bright, shining light in darkness. We epitomize what this country says it's about. America said we believe in freedom. Black people really do, though. <laughs> America said we believe in liberty. Black people really do, though. America said we believe in justice for all. Black people really do, though. Today, America says it believes in diversity. Black people really do, though. We find no contradiction in having an HBCU celebration, a commencement, and the valedictorian being a dear white sister. We never sent anybody through Dred Scott saying that white people have no rights that black people are bound to respect. We never sent anybody through Plessy versus Ferguson saying we need to be separate but equal. Nobody had to impose Brown versus Board on us for us to allow 
our dear white brothers and sisters into our spaces. We have done it willingly. We have loved willingly, even when we haven't been loved back. What is an HBCU? An HBCU is home. It is a place where you go not to learn to sing and dance, even though the singing is great. Not to learn to play basketball, which Steph Curry, if he did it a little bit better, our dear friend Corey Shaw, wouldn't be so heartbroken today. <laughs> Not to learn to play football, my dear friend. Out here, Johnny Jones is on the faculty. I love him to death. His one flaw is that he's a Dallas Cowboys fan. <laughs> and now he teaches at a school whose mascot is the Falcon. Nobody had to force us into any of these things. But it was America that said it was illegal for black people to learn to read. It was America that said it was illegal for black people to gather in groups greater than three. It was America that said black people couldn't live in sundown towns. It was America that doesn't tell you that the whole country really is a sundown town without telling you it is. It's America today that's still banning books, burning books, and passing legislation to put us on the periphery. But it's HBCUs that have taken the best of us and the least of us and armed us to fight this struggle to bring true decency, justice, freedom, equality, and intellectual engagement, and most of all, truth to this country. I'm so happy to be with you today. But I want to tell you this. What you are doing, do not underestimate what you are doing today, graduates. This is an incredible thing. As Denzel Washington said in The Great Debaters, what Simmons College has helped you do, like Morehouse did for me, it has helped you find, helped, helped you to find, to guard and keep your righteous mind. Because there will be so many attacks on that mind as you move forward. So I want to leave you with this. Ten little things, ten short little things, some a little funny, some more serious that I hope that you will carry with you and remember a few. Number one, a Jewish friend of mine told me a fabulous thing about a ceremony they call a Seder. And he said five or six times during the Jewish Seder, they will say to their people and their children, never forget that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. Note, they don't say, never forget your ancestors were slaves in the land of Egypt. They said, never forget that you were a slave in the land of Egypt. So there's that tie to their ancestors. The past and the present is beautifully melded and it is not forgotten. And it is done repeatedly. Let us learn from my Jewish brothers and sisters. I say to you today, never forget that you were a slave in this land called America. Do not forget that even though some want to make the teaching of that truth illegal. Never forget your history. Never forget the families, the neighborhoods, and the great African sun-kissed people you come from and what we've overcome and the work we still have to do amongst ourselves and with our allies. Two, understand the legacy that you join today as HBCU graduates. Studies have shown that alumni of HBCUs are much more satisfied with their educational experiences than black alums from PWIs. That's predominantly white 
institutions. I got a black kid, came to me, said she is leaving the University of Louisville after this year. So she was admitted to Howard, Kevin, and Spelman, but wanted to stay at home and said it was the worst mistake she ever made in her life. And she said that she is leaving because she is sick of feeling like Ruby Bridges in 2023. Now, I'm not sure if the, administ if the administrators at the University of Louisville care about that, but they should. You don't have to feel that way here at Simmons, though. Though we are small, HBCUs have produced 50% of black doctors, 50% of black attorneys, 40% of black engineers, 40% of black members of Congress, 80% of black judges, and 65% of black professors, especially the ones who are halfway conscious. Be proud of this legacy. And remember that schools like yours, like Simmons College of Kentucky, are our elite institutions. They can have Harvard. They can have Yale. They can have Dartmouth. They can have UPenn. We got Howard. We got FAM. We got Tuskegee. We got Fisk. We got Spelman. We got Grambling. We got Morehouse. And we got Simmons. You are HBCU graduates. Bow to no one. Three, remember what Simmons has trained you to be. Increasingly, PWIs see themselves as businesses and are only interested in producing credit hours. I know. I've been a department chair for 15 years. I shudder to tell you how often we go to chairs meetings and talk about education. We do not. We talk about budgets. That doesn't happen here. They talk about you. We're producing credit hours at PWIs, Simmons, and other HBCUs are producing critical thinking citizens who are actually dedicated to democracy and change. Not just this performative foolishness that you hear from these schools with flaccid DEI programs and offices. Four, currently Harvard University's endowment is greater than the endowment of every HBCU combined. If we are to be truly free and not subservient to those who do not have our best interests at heart and continuously going to the table naked and in need, we must be committed to building and supporting our own. Give back to Simmons as liberally as Simmons has given to you. Proactively join your alumni association and take care of your school because nobody else will. The beauty of Kevin Cosby is that he is an institution builder. And anybody who cares about black people outside of our race will support him and others like him, the Bruce Williams of the world, the Tim Finleys of the world, the Corey Schulz of the world. <laughs> Misguided about basketball, but not about building institutions. Support those. It's important. Five. I'm from the housing projects of Atlanta. An old fella told me once, choosing the wrong friends in a place like this can get you killed. As you go out into the world, both personally and professionally, choosing the wrong friends may not get you killed, but it could get you ruined. Choose your friends Carefully, choose the, partner, the people you partner with carefully because what are friends? Friends of family that you choose. Seven, I'm sorry, six. This is a simple one. 
Never trust a coward or a fool. Cowards will leave you and fools just do foolish stuff. Enough said about that one. Seven, never stop learning. You have a superpower which America tried to deny you. You can read. Read Jacanta Diop. Read Paolo Freire. Read Du Bois. Read Anna Julia Cooper. So when you read Anna Julia Cooper, you can come with this when you walk into a room and people ask you what black people think and because you are a Simmons graduate, you can tell them, yes, I speak for all black people. Because when and where I enter, the entire race enters with me. Use it. Eight, find your North Star. Believe in something, not just money, as this country has socialized us. God has used Simmons, I believe, to deliver you to the front lines of leadership. You are now members of what Du Bois called the Talented Tenth, whether you like it or not. We have expectations of you. Most of all, your people are suffering and in need of you. Do not abandon them and give in to selfishness and greed. Remember, you can do good socially while doing well financially. Those things are not mutually exclusive. Nine, and this is a very important one. One of my Morehouse professors told me this. Once you find that calling, you will understand that you, you will spend most of your life at work and asleep. Simmons has prepared you to find a career that you love. Notice I didn't say a job, a career. Find a career that you love. So get that and a very good mattress. <laughs> if you're going to be asleep, get a good mattress. Yes, you know, your, your, your back going to be hurting you if you don't. Lastly, hug and kiss your mama, your daddy, your grandmama, your granddaddy, your brothers, your sisters, your aunties, your uncles, your cousins, your play cousins. You know how black people are. If we got a friend that we've been in elementary school with, people, I got a friend right now, Carrie Norwood, we don't share no blood. And he tell everybody with me, that's my brother. Right? And people, so all your friends and all the other people that you love. Hug them, kiss them, love on them as often as you can. Especially your mama. Happy early Mother's Day to all the mothers here. Your family's proud of you. I know they are. Could all the family members and friends of these graduates please stand? Give your family love, y'all. Give your family love. So we are so proud of you. This is such a great thing. Close, I have so much love for my brother, Kevin Cosby. I talk about it too much, maybe, but keep in mind, this is the 144th commencement of Simmons College. 144th, not the 4th, not the 14th, the 144th. While we're talking about history, I'm sure y'all know it, but if you don't know it, I would advise you to explore what happened to Simmons to create the mandate that Dr. Cosby and his allies resurrected. For something to be resurrected, it had to at some point die. And in this case, Simmons did not die of natural causes. Simmons was killed. And I would like you to explore who killed Simmons? Why 
they killed Simmons. Why they won't acknowledge it to this day and what is owed to Simmons. And I'll give you a hint who killed it. I spend a little time at that school every day of my professional life and I will help you seek the reparations that you are due. God bless you, Falcons. Go forth and do well. Oh, let's give him a hand, y'all. That's powerful. Right on time. Thank you, Dr. Ricky Jones, so very much for this rousing address that I believe suits the occasion, and we are grateful for your service and your voice in this community and abroad. Let's give him another hand. Over the course of 144 years, there have been many academic leaders that have kept graduating classes educated and prepared for this world. But I stand to tell you one of the greatest academic leaders that I have ever known is now serving with us at Simmons College of Kentucky. Just a few years ago, we were blessed to welcome to our college this man, this fearless leader, who decided after serving at three other HBCUs that he would cast his lot with Simmons. And he brought with him gifts and talents, experiences that he said, I must enhance the work of Simmons College of Kentucky. And I'm not just talking about ideas, but I'm talking about writings, experiences that have led to nearly at least $5 million that have come to this great institution. And this leadership, expanding our academic offerings day by day, establishing these three schools that will eventually grow to be many more. We are grateful and thankful to welcome to this stage right now our Vice President for Academic Affairs, none other than Dr. Javan Reed, Dr. Cosby. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Come on, let's turn this place up. <laughs> Come on, we can do better than that. Congratulations again to the class of 2023. Everyone's in place. This is the time now we celebrate these gifts, these talent, and we ask you now just to keep in mind that the door is not closing. The door is opening to so many more opportunities. President Cosby. To the Board of Trustees, faculty, staff, and everyone present here today, I would like to present these candidates who have successfully completed all requirements and coursework for the Associate of Arts and the Bachelor of Arts. These graduates come with the recommendation of the faculty and the Board of Trustees. And I present them to you in order they have earned their degrees to be conferred appropriately. This time, I will ask the candidates receiving the degree for the Associate of Arts in General Studies, please stand. You may come. Nicholas Oren Odell Anderson. <laughs> 
Don Quayle Jacour Andrews. Will the candidates receiving the degree for the Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies please stand? LaShondra Lias Lockhart. Cum laude. Anthony E. Somerville Sr., magna cum laude. Dawn Monique Worthley. Fall 2022, cum laude. Yeah. Will the candidates receiving the degree for Bachelor of Arts in Sociology please rise? Patricia Ann Reeves, summa cum laude. <laughs> Kiata Thomas, magna cum laude. <laughs> Destiny Wheatley, fall 2022. Cum laude. <laughs> Will the candidates for the degree for the Bachelor of Arts in Music Performance please rise? Howerton. <laughs> James D. Shropshire. Yeah. Xavier Sims. Will the candidates, the candidates receiving the degree for the Bachelor of Arts in Business Entrepreneurship please rise. Anita Jeanette Williams.
Will all, all candidates receiving the degrees for the Bachelor of Arts in Music Performance, the Bachelor of Arts in Religious Studies, the Bachelor of Arts in Sociology, the Bachelor of Arts in Business Entrepreneurship, Associate of Arts in Religious Studies, and the Associate of Arts in General Studies, please stand. Upon the recommendation of the faculty of Simmons College of Kentucky and with the approval of the Board of Trustees and as the president of Simmons College of Kentucky, I now bestow upon you the degrees that you have earned in your particular area with all rights and privileges appertaining thereunto. Congratulations. You may, now, you may now turn your tassel to the other side. Thank you. You may be seated. Come on, let's give these graduates another hand. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, please put your hands together one more time for the class of 2023. At this time, we'll have Dr. Frank Smith give requests for, the, for those receiving the honorary doctorate degree. Thank you so much. Dr. Ricky Jones. Let me. Dr. Jones, Gary Dorian, perhaps the greatest ethicist on the planet today, according to Eric Michael Dyson, says that William J. Simmons was the founder of the black social gospel movement. In the white church, it's Walter Rauschenbusch. But in the black church, it is William J. Simmons and Bishop Henry McNeil Turner. Which means that when you think of Benjamin Mays, Martin King, Jesse Jackson, Hosea Williams, they all trace their ideological origin to William J. Simmons. And I'm confident that William J. Simmons is standing in heaven because you are receiving this degree and you deserve it. You deserve it because as you said in your presentation, you're not a coward. I have seen you put your career, I've seen you put your status and even your very life on the line to protect our people. And we're, we want to bestow upon you this honorary doctorate of humane letters 
to recognize how grateful we are for all you have done for black people and for marginalized people. Congratulations, Dr. Ricky Jones, graduate, honorary doctor of humane letters. Jason Claiborne. They call the Hawkins the first family of gospel music. Well, let me get the record straight. The Hawkins, is, they're not the first family. The Claibornes are. Your grandmother, Paul said, Timothy, I want you to remember the spirit of God that is in you that was first in your mother Lois and in also your mother Eunice and is also in you. And that same spirit that passed down from your grandmother to you, the spirit of excellence, the spirit of commitment, the spirit of dedication. What I appreciate most about you and what you have brought to quote unquote mainline Baptist churches is that we don't have to be ashamed of emotional vitality. That's Africanity. That we don't have to be stoic in our worship. But we can be expressive. And you have freed us up in conservatism, which Kentucky tends to be, to be authentically who we are as a people. You're gifted. You're one of the greatest songwriters in the United States of America. The Jewish Talmud says that every person should at least do one of three things. Have a baby, plant a tree, write a book. What they're saying is that you ought to do something in your life that will live on after you. So plant a tree, write a book, have a child. I want to add one more thing to that. Write a song. And, J and Jason Claiborne has, will write us, has written songs that 144 years from now, the church will still be singing. And it is because of this that we proudly bestow upon you, Jason, this honorary doctor of humane letters. Congratulations. The Reverend Timothy Finley, Jr.
There's another Timothy in the book of the Bible. And the Timothy in the Bible reminds me of the Timothy that we honor today. Because both of them were men who dared to speak truth to power. And during the height of the rebellion of 2020, one face that was out there that left church seats and went to city streets was Tim Finley. So many people are asking the question in the church, why have young people left the church? Well, we've got it backwards. Young people didn't leave the church. The church left young people. And Tim Finley is being used in a remarkable way as a fisher of men to be a bridge to a generation of people who have been forgotten, neglected, and do not have an advocate. I will never forget when I looked on the news and saw him being arrested and handcuffed. And I said, look at Timothy. That same Paul spirit, that same Timothy spirit, the same spirit of Martin Luther King. And now he serves as the CEO of Elder Serve. Which our community needs to get behind. Seniors in the black community, so often invisible. Tim Finley is the person and elder service, the institution that is their advocate. I can't put into words what this man means to me. I know the Kingdom Fellowship is thankful to God and blessed to have this man as your pastor. And we are honored to bestow upon him this honorary doctor of divinity for his many years of service and sacrifice to the kingdom of God. Congratulations, brother. Mr. Joe Level. So many people get DDs, and this is what it stands for. Didn't do it. <laughs> DD, don't deserve it. But Joe did it, and Joe deserves it. Yeah. And the musical presentation that we heard today which was excellent, personifies and captures what Joe Level does on a consistent basis. Someone said to me that there is, and I didn't know it because you don't know it when you're in it, a unique Louisville sound. A Louisville sound. I knew there was a Detroit sound. I knew there was a Chicago sound. But there's a unique Louisville sound when it comes to gospel music. And if there is a unique Louisville sound, it is because Joe Level helped to produce that unique Louisville sound. 
One of our trustees and Pat and Joe's pastor, my brother Walter Malone, said to me, he said, Kevin, the reason I like hymns is because hymns don't need help. Which is to say, when you just sang a hymn, as Colossians 3.16 says, which says, let the word of God dwell in you richly, speaking to yourself with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. When you have somebody who is a hymnologist like Joe Level, then the church is healthy because it's not receiving junk food. And what we all love about Joe Level is that any time he gets up to direct a choir, it's not cotton candy music. It's not 7-Eleven songs, seven words sung 11 times. <laughs> but it is music that is substantive, challenging, and theological. You don't say thank you to people when they pass off the scene. Because dead noses don't smell roses. You say thank you to your mother, to your father, and those who have benefited you while they know it. And Joe, this is Simmons College way and the city of Louisville's way of saying to you, Joe Level, Thank you, my brother, for all you have done. Congratulations again to all of the honorary doctorate recipients. Let's give them a hand. Each year, the faculty at Simmons College of Kentucky votes on the Elijah P. Mars Outstanding Faculty Award. The 2022-2023 recipient is none other than Professor Christian Lucas. We give this award for her dedication, leadership, and service to Simmons College of Kentucky. Brothers and sisters, in the month of April, our school received $2 million from the Ball Foundation in San Antonio, Texas, to inaugurate the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson Senior Center for Social Justice. And the purpose of the center is to initiate 
the, the open project of Simmons College. What is the open project? Well, just let me give one letter, opportunities, O. We want to provide opportunities for people in the poorest zip codes, the red line zip codes of Louisville, Kentucky, to get an education. And we're raising scholarship money for these students from the most marginalized and disadvantaged communities. P, pathways. Simmons is a pathway, our multiple degrees. Um, I think now it's how many, 14, is it 14? 14 degrees and counting new departments. I will say this, that there's a great chance that the next time we have our commencement, we will not be Simmons College of Kentucky because of some things that are developing. We will probably have to change our name back to Simmons University because of a master's program. Potential. Pathways. E, examples. These students are examples to other students, our potential Simmons students. N is networks. Our center, the Jesse Lewis Jackson Center, um, is presenting a special award to a particular person who will be serving in the center. In fact, he was in the streets. He was in gangs. Great basketball player, but not knowing paths or opportunities or his own potential. He spent his life on the streets as a young man, engaging in untoward activity. As a result of that experience, Kalen Hall was shot. Many of the victims of violence don't die. Most of them don't. In fact, four to five people a day are, are being shot, and you don't hear anything about it. It's routine. Kalen was shot, lost the use of his legs, but he did not lose the use of his dream, his hope, and his mind. And he enrolled as a freshman at Simmons College of Kentucky this year. And when we received the money, we said, what better person to hire as an ambassador to other people in marginalized community like Kalen Hall. And we're going to now bestow upon him the special Jesse Jackson Sr. medallion as the first recipient for his courage and for his participation in making our school better and what he will do to be transformative in our city. Won't you put your hands together and celebrate this remarkable young man? No, I said it's heavy too. It's heavy. Yeah. Congratulations. Amen. Let's give it up. This has been a wonderful day, an inspiring day, and we hope that you will take many messages of hope and peace with you from these expressions that have been shared on today. I do want to mention at this time that we will have the singing of our alma mater and we'll ask Dr. Kevin James and Tracy Mitchell to come.
Let's all stand. The Simmons, oh mama mater, thy history bid us hope, the future that now lies before, may offer wider scope, for deeds beyond standing we're just about to close if you will we want to take just a moment to show an appreciation to the leader of our committee who has done a marvelous job in not just this year but many other years working hard with all of the logistics of getting this ceremony together and we want to at this time bestow as dr. Cosby said did did Dead noses don't smell roses, and your nose is very much alive today, and we want to present you with these roses. Miss mm -hmm. Claudette Linder. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Reverend Linder, for all that you do for Simmons. Quickly, uh, remain standing. We have blood pressure uh, checks today available in the concourse. We would encourage you to go by and get some health information and have your blood pressure ch uh, checked as we have these screenings in process today. And this is sponsored by a stroke of grace, and we hope that you will take part. We also want you to participate in uh, our enrollment process. We have our admissions table and we want all of you uh, to consider enrollment at Simmons and we want you to please on page 27 use the QR code to connect you to our application process but also visit the table in the concourse concerning enrollment opportunities at Simmons. Next on May the 25th you see that we will have the Stroke Smart Fest on our campus from 5 to 8 p.m. on the main campus of Simmons at 1015 South 7th Street. Also, we want you to please enroll in our Summer Bridge program that begins this summer, June the 24th. And this is an opportunity for new students to come to the campus early and learn what college is all about 
and to get acclimated before the semester starts. And we are accepting candidates for that program. So please enroll in that. Finally, you see on the screen that on July the 24th, we will have our Health and Equity Fair as well as Simmons Fest. And we want you to invite the whole neighborhood to our main campus on July the 24th. Set the calendar, and we look forward to seeing you then. At this time, Dr. Cosby will come with closing remarks. As we remain standing, uh, as Dr. Smith said, get back in school. We have the Advanced Leadership School, Executive Leadership Academy, and it is an accelerated program that will allow you to get your bachelor's degree in a year, in 18 months. In 18 months. And these students will either finish up their bachelor's, or go on to their master's, or start their business, or make themselves available because of the marketable skills that they now have. It makes a difference. So come on to Simmons. It's a great school. Come go down with us. We will do the good. At this time, we would ask uh, if Dr. James Adam Ferguson would come and would give us our benediction. Congratulations, graduates. I acknowledge a portion of this prayer coming from the United Methodist Discipleship Ministries. Now that your academic classes have come to an end, may you strive toward excellence in all that you do. As you leave this sacred place, may your voices rise up to pronounce justice and peace in the world. As the celebrations end, may you find joy and peace even in the dark and lonely places. As the applaud quiets, may you celebrate and lift up those around you. As, now that you have graduated, may your achievements grow in your own lives, but also in the communities in which you serve. I pray that the Lord will bless and protect you and that the Lord will show you mercy and kindness. May the Lord be good to you and give you peace and let everyone together say amen. I do now hereby the declare the 144th commencement exercises of Simmons College of Kentucky adjourned. We would ask everyone to please remain in your seating area and we'll ask our Grand Marshal to come and allow the recessional to take place. Thank you so much for being with us.